Hey guys, Kyle here, classfordespares.com, and today we're gonna to show you how to line ream camshaft bushings on a Triumph 350 500 unit construction engine case. If you guys are interested in line reaming your own camshaft bushings, you can also purchase the same kit that I'll be using today if you take a look at the description below. Let's dig into it. Before we line ream the camshaft bushings, we need to make sure that the drive side area is flat. So we have to use a file to deburr any high spots or any sharp edges. This will ensure that the two crankcase halves are flat and flush together when bolted. Once you have the cases ready, you're going to go ahead and select your camshaft that you'd like to be running, so both intake and exhaust. Once you select the camshafts, then we can move forward to measuring the journal for the drive side so we can get an idea of just how much clearance and the type of reamer that we need. Now that we have the camshaft selected, we're gonna write intake and exhaust on the proper cams just so we don't get them mixed up. Once we go ahead and do that, we're gonna grab our micrometer and then we're gonna go ahead and reset it just to make sure everything is at zero prior to measuring the OD of the camshaft journal. Once the micrometer is set, we're gonna measure the outside diameter of both the intake and the exhaust camshafts. And the reason why we're gonna do this is because it's gonna help us select our reamer so we can figure out what type of running clearance that we would like. Once we have the dimension, in this case, the intake and the exhaust were about three tenths off, which is very close, we're gonna write the true dimension on the outside of the camshaft. Now that our crankcase is properly prepped and we have the dimension of our camshaft, we can start to assemble the timing side case to the drive side case. So we're gonna grab all of our necessary hardware, studs, washers, and nuts, and we're gonna bolt the case down just like final assembly. Once you have the drive side and timing side case halves bolted together, we can start moving forward to the next steps to be able to properly ream our camshaft bushings. Looking inside my toolbox, I'm going to grab our proprietary CBS camshaft bushing pilot. Then I'm going to grab our reamer. The reamer that we're going to be using is a straight flute reamer with a diameter of 0 0.8110. On this sticky note, I'm going to write down journal number one and journal number two of both the intake and the exhaust camshafts. So we have 0 0.80995 and 0 0.8097. So with the dimension of the reamer, which is 0 0.8110, on one cam I'll have one thousandths clearance, and the other cam I'll have a thou and three tenths. With our running clearance determined, we're going to grab our CBS pilot here. And again, you can purchase these same camshaft bushing reamer kits that I'm using in this video off of our website. Uh, each of these pilots are honed on the honing machine, and so it is a very smooth, precise fit on the reamer. All right, let's get our supplies ready. We have some assembly lube. We have our lubricating oil, which is cutting oil, and then we have our chuck. Now this chuck, I do understand not everyone's gonna have, but I use this chuck on the milling machine, and this chuck I'm going to use to be able to drive or turn the reamer. Depending on how much material you have to remove, you might be able to do it by hand. If not, you'll have to be able to use something like a chuck to be able to rotate the reamer so it can consistently cut. So right now I'm actually lubricating the shaft, putting some assembly lube on the shaft of the reamer, and I put some cutting oil on the flutes, and we're going to insert the pilot into the timing side camshaft bore hole. So everything is a very snug fit, and this allows us to cut a very straight hole. Uh, assembly lube is very, very important, as well as cutting lube. So you wanna be able to use a lot of cutting lubricant to make sure that it clears the chips and leaves a really nice finish. Very important tip here, always turn the reamer in a clockwise motion. Whether you are cutting the bushing or removing the reamer from the bushing, never turn it counterclockwise. You will damage the finish and you could dull the reamer. So always turn it clockwise, very important, and use a lot of cutting oil. All right, so I went ahead and removed the reamer from the camshaft bushing and we're just gonna do a quick inspection. Everything looks really nice. It looks like it left a really good finish. So our turning clockwise worked out really good. So next up, we're gonna start working on the exhaust camshaft bushings, and we're gonna follow the exact same steps that we did for the inlet bushing. All right, now that we have the exhaust reamer in place, we are ready to cut. We're gonna follow the same steps, use a lot of cutting oil. You don't wanna put a lot of down force into the bushing, but once it starts to cut, just feel free to start rotating it clockwise and it should be able to follow it from there. Here's a side view of the reamer cutting the exhaust camshaft bushing. Notice the chips falling from the bottom. 
All right, the exhaust camshaft bushing is complete. We're just gonna do a quick visual inspection. Once everything looks good, we're gonna to go to the back of the shop to our solvent tank and we're gonna give these cases a thorough cleaning. All right, so I'm at the solvent tank and I have the cases at hand and I'm gonna clean the intake exhaust bushing and the exhaust camshaft bushing to make sure that there's no debris, chips, or swerf. Once the cases are thoroughly clean, I'm gonna turn on my air compressor off camera and blow everything out just to get rid of anything that's left behind. Once we get done with these cases, then we can start dry fitting the camshafts to make sure that they fit, rotate, and in line. With the cases nice and clean and the debris is gone, we're gonna grab one camshaft here. Considering that they're about three tenths apart, doesn't really make a difference. So I would put it inside the exhaust bore and the camshaft spins really nice, no issues, falls right in place. Again, that's about a thousandth running clearance. Then we're gonna grab the same camshaft and we're gonna go to the intake side and make sure that it drops in and which it does. So it falls right in place, it rotates, it spins, no issues at all. So as far as I'm concerned, we can call this job successful and we'll know that our camshafts will rotate and they're properly in line. Now that we have the camshaft bushings in line and the camshafts fit, we're gonna split the cases to look at the bushings and we wanna look at the inlet bushing because there's some things that I wanted to go over with you that are very important. If you look at your inlet camshaft bushing towards the very bottom of the bore, you might see a shoulder or an area that has not had the material removed. You might find if you insert your rotary valve that it might not spin properly. If this is the case, there's nothing to worry about. All you have to do is polish the OD of your rotary valve so it will fit inside the shoulder and rotate. All reamers have a chamfered end and the chamfered end is basically preventing it to cut all the way down to the bottom and also the peg. So please be mindful of that before you insert or assemble your entire crankcase assembly because you can actually fix the problem now before you move forward. All right, you guys. So this is going to wrap today's video. I hope you guys learned a lot. Don't forget to like and share the video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate your support. If you're interested in reaming your own camshaft bushings and want to purchase your own kit, take a look at the description below. There's going to be a link that will take you back to the website so you can purchase your own camshaft bushing reamer kit that we make here at CBS in-house. Thank you again. I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you on the next video and hopefully that's very soon.